Right, guys, it's me, Meatball Molly, and you're back on another episode of Coffee with a Chance of Meatballs. Um, I've got sexy tits, iron brew lover, head cake cool. extraordinary, um, six pack for days. What else are we going with? I've got Spencer Brown from York. How about it going in the Highlands, lad? Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, here's going it's starting to look like the, the, the dick from um, Shrek 3. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, we'll be calling you Paddy the Baddy number two soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, lads, how's your day been today? What have you been up to? Yeah, I've just been chilling. I'm chilling, just waiting for this. So. Oh, well, have yeah. Exactly, just oh, for you. Oh, thanks, just, lads. I've been yeah. the calendar all day today just so I could sit and do fuck all. Oh, thank God. Uh, to those listening and watching, I've tried to get them on about three times and it's just not worked out. So, thank <laughs> fuck we finally got here. Um, yeah. But, lads, I'm going to get straight into it then. How was Milan? Was it Milan? Yeah, Milan. Yeah, how was Milan with the Yochau boys? Milan was, Milan was good. It was messy. Yeah. It was just me and Phil just uh, going for a couple meetings that turned into just us two sitting there drinking and then talking for <laughs> like six hours at a time and then uh, ended up... Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. We went and saw, saw um, potential places that we're going to be going to potential events, all these sort of things, and uh, just t- chatted business. It was good, good yeah. stuff. Good. Yeah. I love it. It's like, it was always nice to see when I first got sponsored by uh, Yochab, I'd, I'd like just then realised who you was, and I was like, oh, who's the white guy training with all the tie boxes? And um, and your stories with them on always made me laugh, and then it was the same, like, how creative and funny you are. Know? It was the same when you was in Milan, even with Phil, do you know what I mean? I just thought they must be reminiscing and having yeah. the time of their lives. It's been mental from from just getting my first time on the show from Brian, get me on the show to then me and Milan with the the boss, the boss yeah. of the company. Yeah. Having a sore neck because I'm turning around looking at all the models. <laughs> I'd be the same. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So, uh, my audience, lads, is is predominantly MMA. So mm-hmm. I know it's quite a generic question that you'll always get asked. Uh, but to the the fans that you can be hitting to now, how did you get your big break in Thai boxing to go over and be and live in Bangkok with the boys? And and I know the story, but they might not. So yeah, of course. Um, well, it, all, it started a wee bit further back from just getting out to Thailand. That all happened due to me getting first sponsored by Yorko. First, but then to even get that, I had to then get onto the show. So um, it came from from me fighting in Scotland and then building myself up in Scotland. And I was number one at fifty five kilos at the time, and uh, I was supposed to f- defend the number one spot uh, against a boy for Glasgow. And then he pulled out a week before the fight, just shat it, didn't want to fight. Um, then they brought a boy from England down, and it was a uh, it was Sam Baruka. He just fought on Yorkow before. He fought um, oh I can't remember his name. Ah well, we were there watching it, and uh, and they, we looked at him and they went, oh maybe that you could fight him in two years, and we went ah okay two years maybe, and then two, uh, fucking eight weeks later they said <laughs> right okay yeah, and I was in geography class and uh, and I looked him up. Went to the toilet and looked him up, and they had the belt here, a belt here, a belt here, a belt here, and I'm going, holy shit! Did you f- I, did you flap it, lad? I had four fights. Shut up. I had four four, uh, four four professional fights. He had about twenty twenty five, whatever, world champion, all this and that. I thought, fuck it, I'll fight him. Yeah. Don't give a shit. Uh, walked in, we beat the shit out of one another five, five rounds. He was training with Frankie at the time, uh, Frankie Hudders, and we just beat the shit out of one another. Yeah. Decision, but it was a bit controversial and the people booing and people cheering and I was like okay it's no problem but Brian was uh, judging the fight yeah called him and uh, and he said well I want that fight on my show and uh, rang, rang me up a couple of weeks later and um, offered me the fight in March and uh, that was it got into the Yorker show and like 53 kilos cut myself right down skin and bone what was your walking um, round at then lad about 60 I was struggling to even get down so this is I was 16 at the time I was I, I was 16, 17, and uh, I was growing. I, I was I was getting big, you know. I was starting to get muscular and stuff like that, and um, and I was training a lot. And the more I was training, still now, the more I train, the bigger I get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I didn't know how to cut weight at the time either. It was like we were running after the the uh, the weigh-ins and scanning packs packets of like high balls and stuff like that, you know. Lads, I used to have like um, I remember I used to box because we'd cut weight the same as a Thai boxer back then, and I'd have an egg and bacon sandwich. A boost bar, a Lucas Aid, 
and a Mars bar and think I am refueled, ready to go. Yeah. No, well, what, I, yeah, and then you like you you never gas because you always find a way to push through. Yeah. But think about how mad that was cutting weight like just, that. Just getting into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we I cut and then I really focused on nutrition and I cut myself down and uh, stood in the scales. 50, we did fifty one point eight. I like I'll get the picture for you. I look horrible, but like mentally I was like I was gonna kill this guy, and uh, ended up losing that fight as well. Um, so the first fight I got in York, I lost. And then Brian asked me back because it was such a good fight. Yeah. Um, and I fought with heart. I fought with heart and I pushed forward and I kept going. And uh, it was a good scrap. So then asked me back, won the next one, asked me back, lost that one, asked me back, won the next one, and then started winning, 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 winning. Yeah. And, uh, and then that was how it basically progressed. And as soon as I finished high school, um, everyone was going off to university. And I had a real tough time in high school. Um, I'm really badly dyslexic. Well, I say I was really badly dyslexic. So I had a real tough time. And uh, I knew for sure I'm not going into another four or five years of, of hell again, you know. Yeah. Um, so I was like, no, fuck this. I'm going to go off to Thailand. So as soon as I finished school, within a week, I packed up, went out for three weeks because that was all I could really afford at the time. Went out for three weeks, went to Yorkow. They said I could go anywhere I wanted to. But I said, no, no, you guys have done well by me and you've sponsored me. It was only like a very small sponsorship, but Yorkow was what I was looking at when I first started the sport, you know. It was Sanchai, Liam. Yeah. And Ocal, Jab Askroff and all that at the time when they were all uh, signed. And to uh, anyone who's listening or watching who doesn't know Thai boxing, that is like that's like UFC level, the Ocal show, isn't it? Yeah. Like the, the credentials yeah. of the people on that are the best in the world. Sanchai is like the Sanchai is the pound for I'm sure most um, most guys people, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Sanchai and Boca are like the, the best pound for pound guys, you know, at the time. And well, Sanchai still, but um so that was where I was set my, my sights on anyway. So I, I thought I'd go over to Bangkok and train with the guys. And then three three weeks, after three weeks, Phil and um, Sanjay had a wee chat when I was going for a run. And they said, do you want to go for a full-time spot? I had a bunch of fights that year. So I said, well, I'll come out in January. And then that was me, January 2016, I think it was, 2017, one or the other. And uh, that was me, three years, three and a bit years out there, non-stop back and forth, because I was fighting Bolton on Brian's show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out again, and uh, that was me, basically. So it was a lot of a lot of fights and a lot of, a uh, lot, a lot of, lot of hard work. Yeah. To get to. I rem- um, yeah, I remember when I was speaking to you when lockdown happened, and I spoke to maybe five different fighters from five different disciplines and done their training regime for a week. And I remember when you sent me yours, I was like, oh... My, I lasted three days. I didn't even last a five day camp, and I just thought, how the fuck you managed to do that was next level. When you first got there, lad, um, I know for a fact you would have been made to feel welcome, and that's they mm. they things hospitality and making you feel like you you wanted their own. But what was the language barrier like, and was it just like you had to go off body language and like, and <laughs> and just like how would you even know what to do? There's a lot of sign language. Was it? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> what was it uh, exactly <laughs> uh, yeah well there was me and there was another foreigner when we were there so we could at least had someone I could talk to and he couldn't really speak Thai at the time either Turkish guy and then once when he left it was basically a necessity you had to just pick it up as soon as you could as quickly as you could because um, they would but the good thing is the Thais wanted to try and speak English anyway so they would try and speak English to you and then you would try and speak Thai to them because they want to develop their, their English as well but uh, when I first went over, yeah, it was like very, very minimal. And Phil was there, so I got to chat to him, and he's basically like directing me through. So I would learn off my own back because I just felt shit, like walking around and not being able to speak to people and like expecting, like then. Yeah, it's like, a proper arrogance, expect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, expecting them to understand what you're saying, you know, and then, and then it's just uncomfortable for both of us. So, so I had to, and the guys in the gym can speak Cambodian as well, and then some of them are Isan, and then they're like they're all over the place, so they're, they're, the 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 language is all mixed, so I can speak a bit of Cambodian, I can speak Isan, I can speak a bit of Thai as well. Like I, I'm, I've got words all over the place, and um, but it was basically just for immersion and just watching what was going on. They would say something, and then what they did, and I went right. Okay, that's, that's what, yeah, yeah. Oh, like they would ask, I'd go and get food, and I'd see someone at a food court going uh, Nam Pao Song, and I went Nam's water, Pao bottle water, two, two at the end, okay, bottle water two. Yeah. <laughs> I walked up and I'm pow song. I got two bottles of water. And I, okay, got that down, you know. You was like a little legitimate Billy Moore, weren't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like actual legitimate Billy yeah. Moore. Things you got to learn right out the bat, like no spice, 
that's the one thing I learned quick because you're gonna get in trouble. You get in trouble, big thing. And uh, so my pet, my pet, my pet. And I'm like, no, no, look a bit. I'm like, no. No, lad, I've got like a virgin tongue myself. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah, when I go anywhere, I'm like, absolutely not. Do you know what I mean? But like, if I if I have a tie, it's literally pad tie or mushroom curry. Do you know what I mean? Like, no spice, it's just pure cream and that. Yeah, so that was it. But it was it was quite quick. I, I picked it up quite quick, and um, but it was basically just out of necessity because like. Was you fluent? Are you still fluent? Or are you are you broken yeah, tie, but you you fluent? But I would like I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but then when I go out there, the ties say that I'm get really really good tie. But again, that's probably down to foreigners not really having great tie, you know. So, um, like I I can still keep up. I do. I I miss speaking tie, you know. Um. Like, I, I, I walk about, like, having wee conversations in my head and tie just so I can keep it up, you know? Yeah, like, you have to. Yeah, yeah. I know, um, I've got a Thai, bo- a thai friend, s- s- sorry, she does Thai boxing, her name's Monica. She trains mm. down in Bournemouth, and um, she's from Poland, but she says she thinks and dreams in English. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I imagine it's the same for you. I get it and drill it into your head, you know? Yeah. It took me a long time just to stop speaking Thai to people that weren't Thai. Like, I would go... I come home and uh, I would buy something and I'll go. Thank you. I, I, I would say cut and then they'd look at me and I would like twitch and I'd be like stop. And, <laughs> and, and it was the worst. But even when I went to Italy when we're fighting in Turin, I'd go grazie cap and they go what? And I'm like not. And I'm like, just walking off and I'm like who the fuck is this kid? Like as if I've got some schizophrenia. I'm like no 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 wrong wrong language. <laughs> what's that? Uh, what's that man? What's that film called? He's the Scottish guy and he's got like twenty different fucking. He's a schizophrenic. Yeah, 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 that's just you, when isn't it? I shaved, head, I shaved my head and I had my glasses. That was exactly what I looked like, James McAvoy. I'm sure I messaged you saying that as well. I was yeah. like, you fucking weird out. <laughs> when um when you was fighting in Thailand, lad, um, did you feel much different pressure as to when you would fight in Bolton or in Scotland because you're the white guy over there, or was it not really much difference? If anything, it was less pressure. Was it? Yeah, um, and like, and it's a different kind of pressure. It was more like a you need to. It's more. It's less about the the decision and more about how you fight out there. So it's less about like just get the win and more about they don't care if you win or lose. It's if, it's how you fight. See if I get the win, but I, I was being a, a bitch about it and I was running back and I was just scoring and I was cowering away and I was just doing what I needed to do. They would go through me. But if I lost the fight, but I fought like a motherfucker, and I was going through, taking shots, coming back, yeah. taking a big hit, and I'm coming back strong. Then yeah, after well. they're picking me up, thinking you're great, you know. Yeah. I'm looking at them, thinking I'm about to get beaten up, and they're going, oh. <laughs> they're going to steal, yeah. <laughs> so for me, it wasn't too much of a problem. Um, and also, when you're back home, it's like a big fight camp, and it's like all this stress going towards this one event. You've got to sell tickets, people are coming to watch you, come and see yeah. you. Uh, they've got all this and that, so it's. It was refreshing just to kind of turn up and fight and only have your corner team there and some people watching you online. Yeah. And uh, if someone had a phone somewhere, if not, then no one else saw you. So yeah. you're just focused on the task at hand. So everything else was cut off. So for me, it was less stress. Um, and then obviously, as you start to get better and, and you start building yourself up more, the stress comes because then more people are watching. Yeah, people yeah. want to get beat as well. Mm-hmm. In Thailand as well, they, were, they started to know who I was and they wanted to beat me. So they were giving me like harder ties, and like when I fought in MX, they, they put me up with a motherfucker, and then I knocked him out, and they're like, right, we put another another one and in, then, another, yeah, you know. And it got to the point like I didn't really click on until like taxi drivers were like, oh, you, MM, like, uh, Nick Moyer, and you, I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> and stuff like that. So I never really realised, you know, like how how it was going around. So they were starting to like pick up on me. And then they'll start placing bets. So then that's when some pressure comes in, you know. Yeah. yeah. They never really told me if, if anyone if I was fighting, they wouldn't they didn't tell me if they put bets on. Probably didn't because they thought I was going to lose anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, it was less pressure for me to be honest. What was it like when you started getting a bit big time? Your name was getting massive, and you were starting to travel the world. Do you know what I mean? Because I just seen like over a few years, like. As a brand, your house started like investing in like videographers, and like you start. Like, I feel like I went on the journey with all of you to every fight show. And, like, and it'd be funny, like, when it was the day and you were cutting weight, everyone would have the sweatsuit on. And then yeah. Sanchai would always just be shadow boxing, doing fucking cool shit. And then, I don't know, Manichai would be on the fucking treadmill. And then you would all do it a little bit different. 
I felt like they made it look like he was just a boss team and everyone had the same slick like tracky when you was going to a different country and it just it just looked a belter and I think everyone was half jealous not in a bad way but just like oh, yeah. man, I wish I was doing that do you know what I mean because even though it's you're on your own when you're fighting you know more than anyone without your team you'd you'd absolutely be no one and um yeah how was all that experience lad where was the best place that you all went to um See when you when you're in it, you you don't really. So that's the thing. Like now, you start like, you start realizing. I was I was young as well, and you just I'm saying that because I'm young. I'm young. I'm 23, but I, like back in back in my, my youth, you know, <laughs> you're just kind of there was so much adrenaline going through it. Like even when you were cutting weight or when you were traveling, it was just kind of like, the fuck's going on? Like you're you travel in Hong Kong and then you go and scrap in Hong Kong. And, like I, the first time I traveled to fight was in Hong Kong. Philippe, uh, uh, Philip called me. I was in my bed. And I was supposed to go on holiday to, to to Florida, like in a week, with my parents for like two weeks. And he called me and was like, "Do you want to find Hong Kong?" I went, "Uh, ran through the door, opened the door. Are we? When are we going to Florida next week? Okay, I'm not coming. Poof, close the door. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there." He's like, "What? Right, okay." He's like, "You sure? Like you can train in Florida?" I was like, "No, nah, no, nah, I can't." Like he was like, "I don't want you risking it. Like if you can't fight, you can't do it." Nah, I'll do it. And uh, I ended up getting sick of the week before and went out and fought, get beat raw. But um, yeah, it was like you just kind of took it in your stride and you kept going. So um, the best place I'd probably, the best memories I had was Hong Kong because they were just scraps and it was like crazy. It was a weird, crazy place and there was always a good party after it as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like that was when, that was when I realised I was like, okay, things are starting to like pick up here. And uh, I knew, understood, like, out there, three-round fight, I had to have a war here. And also was proven to people, like, look, I'm not just this little slick, like, tippy-tappy, I, I can have a scrap. I can here. have a go, yeah. War, showed everyone, look, I can have a war. And I showed the ties as well, like, I'm not here just to fuck around. And that's yeah. when I that's when I got the respect from the ties as well. Yeah. Because at that point, I was having a lot of fights back-to-back. And because uh, I walked in to the film, I went, I want as many fights as you can give me. And he's like, what do you mean? I went, I want fights. Okay, we've got a fight here, and he's going. Do you understand? You're fighting every two weeks for the next two months, and I went, yeah, yeah, okay, and yeah. Because then... like people don't understand, like when you kick and you kick shin on shin, or you kick a forearm, or ch- or take one to the elbow, like th- that many little bones in your feet is fucking rough, isn't it, lads? My right foot's bigger than the left now. Is it because it's grown back? Yeah. Yeah, if my, my shoes the. Uh... The, the, the laces on my right foot are, are slacker than the left because the, the bone's calcified on top of the of my foot. Because also when I was first starting out, you don't know how to kick properly. You kick so with your foot, don't you? You're kicking an elbow. And yeah. I would kick someone's elbow and then I'd just keep doing it and I'd just bite them down and go, fuck it, and I'd smack, 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 you know? Um, so it was just trauma and then always kicking the pads, kicking the bags, you know? It's just constant, constant, constant trauma. Yeah. So like my shin bones are like all over the place. Um, my foot's solid but it's big but it's like it's like just almost twice the size of the other one just height wise um but i mean that's part of what what it takes you know like my knuckle fuck my knuckle like but again it's just yeah. part of this it's, this isn't tippy tap shit you know yeah. you're at the end of the day it's, if you're if that's if that's concerning you then you're in the wrong sport you know um and uh, i fought in when i fought in hong kong i fought fought quite a tough boy and i dropped him in the first round and he got up Oh, fuck, here we go. Um, <laughs> I had this war, and uh, I won it. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It was after then. I walked into the the uh, change rooms and all the ties. Kind of looked over and looked at my coach and went, mm. "Like, how and did that he was do? like this, yeah. yeah. How did he do? And he went, "Good, like strong heart. Yeah, no problem." And they all went, "Okay." Yeah. And then after that, it was like <clears throat> this, like weight off my shoulders, and there was not so much of a you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. It was like, right, okay, like, you're you're here now, you know, because that, yeah. was, that, was, that was two years I was still there. So they were still trying to push me, push me, push me, push me, push me, because guys were going there and then training and couldn't hack it and were leaving. Mm-hmm. So they were just waiting on me leaving. Phil was saying the same. He was saying every day, he's going to leave today. He's going to leave today. And then I'm still here like that. You know? <laughs> Hi, guys, it's me. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so that was that was probably my best memory as a result of that, you know. And then I was really like, after that, then it was I was part of the part of the gang, you know. Yeah. Accepted in the term of way, like getting the respect, and then uh, that was when like 
I'd walk into the gym and the younger ties would come up to me and bow to me and stuff like that. Or and uh, if they didn't bow to me, the, the older ties would, oh, go and yeah, show some respect, and, yeah. Go, go to P Spencer, the brother Spencer, and he'd come up to me. I'm sorry, and I'd be like, oh, fuck, happened there? Yeah. Right, okay. It's like you're a bit of a like a god for them, isn't it? Like a, a role model in that. Out there, they um they look at me as if I've got gold dust pointing at my nipples, you know, because they, all they want is blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin, you know, and then I'm out there near pale blue, translucent, yeah. long blonde hair, fucking blue eyes, and they're all like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? And I'm swaggering around thinking I'm I'm hot shit. Hey, and, and your come... speezos on the beach yeah. like that. Then I come home and then no one even no one even sniffs at me and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> right, but, um, yeah, Hong Kong was probably the best one as a result of like the the effect that happened on. But I couldn't place like Sydney. I had the best fights and the best like sort of experience of being there, um, like best performances wise. Um, but Hong Kong, I kind of like gained a lot more personally from you know. Yeah. So. Everyone will know that you've had to take time out of fighting and it's the million... You've tried to be as upfront and honest with everyone yeah. and keep everyone up to date on your social medias. Um, I remember... I can't remember... Where, where was the show that you were supposed to fight on? Uh, it was in Italy, Bologna. Yeah, so to those who don't know, Spen was supposed to fight, his brain scan came back and it wasn't the best news, was it? So... Brain scan was fine. It was the it was the flashes that I was seeing. So I'm seeing these flashes of light, and uh, so I had to get eye tests and brain scans and stuff like that. But at that point, they were like, right. As soon as I had to get an MRI, they're like, right, stop not fighting. Yeah. Yeah. So York, like Yorker were the first ones to tell me like stop fighting. Phil called me up. Was I was training in the gym. I was training really hard as well. When even when I was still getting all this done, just to like process the stress, you know, and because uh, I was panicking as well. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And um, so my way of dealing with that was like, right, okay, I'll just train really hard. Train harder, yeah. Exactly. And uh, so I was in I was in great shape as well. And then they were like, right, stop doing everything. Like, get to your bed and just chill. And Because um, was they, they, they was thinking maybe like an aneurysm or something? Like... When I was at, when I was in the, the, the hospital and they were checking my eye, the first hospital said that I had holes in my eyes, my retina was thinning. Because originally we thought it was the, uh, a retina problem. So a, a common... Um, Retina injuries when you see like a, a bright flash of light. I, but I, I have that. Did you ever see the fight I had where I broke my orbital yeah, bone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mine was the same. It didn't detach, but I I see flashes every. Well, I did at the beginning, and now I see like I call it like cat tears, lad. I just see like bits just floaters yeah. just every now and then just just yeah. coming in my eye. Flashes of light was it like a a, a beam? Yeah. What well, like yeah it was a beam. We'll yeah. see mine. Mine was a perfect circle. Oh. It was really, really strange, and mine was a, a perfect circle, like, and it was really bright, and it was the top right hand corner of my eye. So if I'm looking at you, it'd be a right just above my laptop, you know. Yeah. And, and it would happen like clockwork. Every time I woke up, it would happen twice. Wake up, boom, one, two, bang. Even when I closed my eyes, I could still see it. And uh, and then when I was getting getting tired to go to sleep, it would start kicking in then. Or sometimes during the day, if I was tired, but then it was when I was sparring one day and. Uh, me and Sing Dan were going at it boxing and um, he punched me in the eye and then it, it clicked in and, and it started spinning and I went oh shit this isn't good and uh, it wasn't until we were in um, in America and a friend a guy that was running the gym was talking about Andy Sauer a, kick, a famous kickboxer that was seeing flashes of light and it turned out he had a detached retina they had to rush him to hospital because if you have, if you detach your retina yeah. you have 24 hours and then you're you're blind yep. it's like, uh, that happened to Bisbon didn't it yeah, yeah, exactly. We he then got it redetached, uh, reattached. Sorry, then it detached. Then he got glaucoma. Then it got it detached again. Then he lost his eye. You know. So I'm sitting there going, "Shit, okay, I might lose my eye here." Right, okay. I'd still uh, do it to fight, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you lose your eye to fight still yeah. if you could? Sure. Yeah. Sure. And um, what was it? Uh, and at that point, everyone was trying to take my head off in America as well. So I was like, "Fuck, right, okay." Um, and it took me like a week when I came home. And me and my ex at the time went to the hospital. And they're like, right, you need to get surgery, you need to do this. And I'm like, holy fuck, right. Well, I'm going to go to another hospital and get a second opinion. They said, you don't have any holes in your eyes. There's nothing wrong with your retina. I, my optical nerve was a bit thick. But apart from that, it was fine. And uh, so I went to a third hospital. And then they started all chatting in Thai, but they didn't realise that I could understand what they were saying. Yeah. And then they said, um, oh, it's not coming from his eyes, it's coming from his brain. And then I just went... And they went... 
oh shit oh yeah. and they all like, started whispering and because they saw my head just go down like fuck because then i understood i was like right this is this isn't real it's good. Yeah. you know and um they were saying maybe it was like a like a, had a seizure if i was when i was sleeping or something like that you know it could be all sorts of stuff and um and they're like right we need to get mri here i'm like shit right okay so we got the mri but at this point i was speaking to my, my girlfriend's uh boyfriend who was a professional rugby player for scotland he'd been knocked out 12 times on the field and he's the reason why um and rugby now that if anyone's suspected of a concussion or any brain injury they get pulled straight off the the, uh, the pitch and they get tests done and stuff like that because it really fucked him up it's called like a scat test or something yeah but the only, the only way to properly the only way to properly find out if you've got a concussion is if you've done the test before getting the concussion because if you do the test after you've got a concussion it, that could, that's just your baseline you know so it's already off yeah um, so there's no way to truly find out if you've got a concussion the only way you can find that out is through your symptoms and then I was having behavioural symptoms as well so like my I was starting to catch myself like avoiding social interactions and avoiding this and being more irritable and asked my girlfriend at the time like am I been acting strange and she was like yeah and probably like yeah you've been a wee dick yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah should have said that anyway but <laughs> what was it uh, so I started seeing myself not being not too right so then we we started putting two to two and two together it basically turns it we still don't have a conclusive this is what it is. But the closest thing we can get to is like multiple concussions that have like uh, built up and then basically just accumulated to this flash. And then it can be a result of stress and also the heat out there, constantly being dehydrated and then getting hit to the head and then just like constant stress, like the amount of volume of training. And then I go overboard as well and I do more and I, I go even more intense and stuff like that. Like I would wake up in the morning and it would take me honestly about five minutes to like properly like stand up and move around properly when I was like full going for it. So I, not like I was just overtrained. My adrenals were gone and stuff like that, you know. So it was like it's my own fault as well. But at the same time, you know, it's like you, like if you got the first fight, fight time fighting, you you just go for it. Like, yeah, like there's no, there's no, no telling yet, and it's just like that fact. Like if someone said to me, it's gonna cost you, um. It's gonna cost you never fighting again, but just so you can have these experiences, you do it because you'd still think, mm. no, I can defy the odds because I know what I'm capable of. I mm. know I can push through anything. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. like, it's the same. Well, I've got nothing near. It's the same to you, but I got shades on my brain, yeah. and when I my brain scans, like they get picked up on, and if that ever changes, like that's me done forever. Uh, do you know what I mean? But because you can just never you can never recover from that is yours something that you're ever you're ever going to be able to yeah well that's the thing we don't know because the 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 flashes don't cause me any pain it's only like discomfort where i can kind of feel when it's going to come and it's strange because i can feel it in my eye so it's like as if and there must be something there but they've done all the tests there's nothing there um so it's not causing me any pain and it's not causing me any like trauma or anything it's not damaging me so then i'm like well what are we fucking waiting on here? Like now, at this point, I'm like, it, they are reducing a lot now. Like this, 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 uh, this, this month has been really good. Last month, well, it's only the first week of the month, but like beginning of last month was really bad. So it like comes, it's like dips and troughs, you know, and uh, peaks and troughs. Sorry, and it's quite frustrating at times. But um, I need sometimes I just need to go like monk mode and like cut everything out because before I was start like you start getting things that a way of dealing with it. I was going out and I was yeah, cause, yeah, because. I was, that's what I was going to ask you. What was your coping mechanisms with it? Because when the last 12 weeks I haven't been able to train because I've just had dislocated shoulder, blew me MCL, had corona. I've just been like, fucking, I'm just going to drink my way through it. Because that's like, what do we do when, we, when we've deprived ourselves our whole life of socialising, of eating shit, of drinking? It's like you overindulge then, but then you feel even more guilty. And even way so it's like a proper vicious circle yeah well that was so with me i understood that like okay maybe i've caused this as well you know not just the trauma but mentally i've caused this as well because i'm very i'm a zero or a hundred person you know so i might have caused this by going too hard and cutting out this cutting out that no i can't have this i can't have that i'm doing this and uh so i thought right well the first like six months when i they cut out i was like right everything like focus on health, just get myself in the healthiest place possible. And I was, they were reducing a lot. And then I was starting to get stressed because I was like, well, 
I do kind of want to go and have a drink with my mates. And now I'm saying, oh, it's now it's a different thing. It's like, no, I can't drink because of this now, you know. And uh, it's not causing me any pain, and I'm starting to like justify why I can have a drink now. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, well, I need, I want, I need to have a bit more balance in my life as well, because I'm going from like different extremes, you know, which isn't so healthy either. Yeah. Because like, if I'm focusing on health and then being unhealthy as a result of focusing on that too much, so I was starting to, to bring out a bit more balance in my life, and then it actually helped as well, because when I'm with my friends and I can have a drink, I did my shoulders dropped and I could go off, right. I could actually process it a wee bit and under, like just take a step back, you know, and give myself a bit of a break, you know. Yeah. Um, but then you, you, you take that and then you the next... yeah, yeah, like, look, you can't give us an inch because we'll take a mile, isn't it, lad? Like, I can't just... I mean, I can, but I choose not to ever just have one drink with me dinner. If I'm going, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was... I was... It didn't start a lot then. I was having a drink or two with my beer, and I was trying that I was having that just uh, with, my beer, with my dinner, like to like train myself, just have a beer, have two beers, and that's you. Like, leave it at that. Like, trying to, like, because again, I'm zero 100 like you. I'm like, right, if we're going to drink, we're going to fucking go for this now. You know, it's like three beers to start, then we're going on to and the double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The monster, then it's going on to this, and then going on to that. Yeah. And then. Uh, because, like, if I've spent so long without it, then all of a sudden I'm like, right, we're going to we're gonna go for this. Um, but I caught again. I caught myself just recently. Well, I caught myself with uh, tonsillitis because I started going a bit too. I was burning the candle both ends again, you know. And uh, now I had tonsillitis in my life, but I could, I knew something was coming. You know that way that I knew like yeah. when you you're, you're pushing yourself a wee bit too far again yeah. here, like you're gonna something's gonna come up. And because uh, I was there's like two late nights, early mornings, staying up nights, going out dates drinking friends parties and all this sort of stuff and i'm going right and then all of a sudden i, I take a i go for a beer with my mate just a casual beer drink out a dirty glass bump in yeah. my bed for a week tonsillitis couldn't drink or swallow anything you know so i was like right Get message yourself back to, yeah message to see time to come back yeah um, i mean i'm human at the end of the day like i do like a drink i'm scottish so do you know I'm what I, like i i feel like it's the same between maybe fighters and maybe between myself and yourself but when you've competed at such a high level and you know what you're capable of and what level you want to operate at when you're not doing what you think you should be doing it Mm. just kills you and i've felt the need to have to explain to people why i will have a drink on a weekend or why i'm eating shit because people like like they're not they probably are i feel like i've been judged a little bit but then it's just like fuck me have you just seen what i've done in the last seven yeah. years of my life do you know what i mean and 100%. and to be honest spend your you're 23 do you know what i mean like my magic years was 20 to 23 when i was at uni and that's when after that i was like right fucking sort your life out. well not sort your life out but that's when i started mma and then i had seven years of like the most amazing time in my life but it's just hard to not be hard on yourself and the good thing the positive and what i see in you and what i'm hearing from you is you always find your way back because mm. and, and thank fuck for that do you know what i mean because sometimes you can totally get lost in it and i've been on one for like three four months and people's just like when's she gonna get back yeah but they're actually not but that's what i'm thinking yeah yeah do you know what i mean that's, that's the thing like i've always kept a close eye on myself though like um like I, i've always kind of understood the my potential of how bad i could get you know not even bef- like before I even started Thai box, like Thai box and fucking sort of me. Life, like, yeah. Um, I was lucky that I I went up to school in Glasgow because the, the kids I was hanging around with and where I'm from in Irvine, if I went to the same school, like there's a group of five of us, four of them are in jail, you know, or being in jail or in and out of jail, um, stabbing people, fights, just assaults, all this sort of stuff, you know. Um, and I I've, I've always been in like the the kind of like the bad boy group, but not being one of the bad boys, you know. But um, but I was all like, even in high school, it was like there was like the cool kid bad boy group that were all off doing drugs and all this sort of stuff. But I wasn't the one doing the drugs. Yeah. I was just, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I knew it's not that I didn't do drugs because I was like, oh, I don't do drugs. I'm an athlete. It's like no, because I know I'll fucking like it. Yeah. And then <laughs> on I know what I'm like, you know, if I enjoy the that and it's an addictive substance, yeah, I'm done. Like that's me. Done. I'm bad enough with caffeine. Never mind cocaine. Put it yeah. that way. Like, like- that's what well, you know. So. I just there's some things I just don't I just don't let myself dip my finger in you know and um it took me a long time to even like 
even just experiment with fucking like weed or something like that you know i was like oh no 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 no. but then once you actually understand what the substance are and all these sort of things it's about the, the intention you take with it it's just educating yourself even just educating yourself on who you are as well your emotional intelligence reading all this sort of stuff that's what's really helped me as well so yeah. if you, you understand who you are and your little ticks and your, your coping mechanisms and then you can realize when you're going down a destructive and path how, and how back. to bring yourself back yeah and i, I think fighting it and being a martial artist it's about the journey do you know what i mean to enlightenment at the end for me like people just think oh we're just getting in there to have a war yeah, yeah but it's like the lifestyle that we take with it and we really enjoy that and um I yeah guess. for me mate i think like the second i was allowed back in the gym i haven't had a drink since i'm not yeah. like i'm an alcoholic but it's just like my focus is back yeah, do you know what I mean? that's no i get that yeah yeah so I have got, I put a thing on, didn't I, with you and um, Too Sexy for My Shorts. And I've got a few questions, lad, that I just want to see if you can answer for the fans just before I go. Um, right, some of these might be a joke. Uh, Shay, will you ever sign for 1FC? Well, would you, if, oh, the Iron Brew 32. Coo coo, you tweedy old crow. Do you remember that? <laughs> lad, if you, if you could fight again. Would you follow Liam Harrison over there and uh, Jonathan Hackett in that? Hundred percent. Yeah. Like if the fight's there, I don't care where it is, who it is. If it's the fight, if the if the name's right and the price is right as well, like the end of the day, I'm not. It's not a philanthropic affair. Affair here. I'm not doing this for free. But they they did call us, and then they tried to they tried to put me in like bind me in with a contract stuff like this and we're like no we want an open contract so I'm still fighting in Yorker all this sort of stuff and they're just not like that are they yeah, well, well they, they can be but it's just it takes some negotiation and they, they just grab someone else that they could lock in yeah uh, so if anything that's going to show them well I'm not just a sheep yes. here a lot of people are running and jumping for shiny coins and then they then don't get another fight you know so I, I showed my worth and I'm going well I'm not just going to jump on things you know like I want this and I want that. I have my set of stands, but hundred yeah. um, percent, like I, I want that. I want to get on there. I want to get back in those MMA gloves. I fought in MMA gloves four times in Thailand, had three first round knockouts. You know, like <laughs> last time with those, and then I put those on. I put um, when Liam came down to Yorker and yeah. he gave me one gloves. Did he? And yeah. I, and I went, and even and he went, ooh, like oh fuck, I like this. I like this a lot. Like, hey. but at the time, my coach is like, uh, and, uh, uh, listen. Loaded. The next question is tips for everyone to avoid head trauma injuries like yours. <laughs> yeah, you don't put them little fucking gloves on. <laughs> that was what I was saying to the, the guy, the coach I'm training with fucking Glasgow now, Tommy Young. I'm like, I want to get in that. I want to go in one and put those MMA gloves on. He's like, you're an idiot. I'm yeah, like, what? imagine fucking spending a year, two years out. Yeah. Go and put fucking MMA gloves on. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like I'm not gonna get hit. I'll hit them. Like, oh, like fucking slow yourself. Down. Get back into it. I'm like, ah, come on, give me them, man. Give me them. Oh, I know. If I, I, if I touch someone with my power, and if I touch someone with a uh, with those gloves on, doesn't Mad. matter. They're, they're, it's game they're... over, isn't it? Yeah. It's fucking game over. Um, Stokely Pokely, which pair of your uh, shorts are your favourite of the Ocha ones? Which Scotland, for sure. Scotland ones. Yeah. I've still got the original, like, I've, I've badgered Phil for years. I was like, get me a pair of York, uh, get me a pair of uh, Scotland shorts, get me a pair of Scotland shorts. You've got the, the Brazil ones, you've got the Australian ones, like, give, me, give me a Scotland pair. Yeah. And uh, they, they were usually like, nah, 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 we're not doing it. It wasn't until Ireland. And then he pulled out the pair of, uh, of Scotland shorts for the, the weigh-in. And then he brought a pair of Irish, Irish pairs. I was like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> The one pair, don't bring out Irish one. Just give me the Scottish pair, but I've still got those that I fought in. Those are the original. They'll stay with me for for, for the rest of your days. They're my favourite, yeah. Um, this is a funny one, lads. Being from Scotland, how often do you train the headbutt? <laughs> <laughs> it's already involved in your in your in your uh, psyche. You know, it's a bit like it's a bit like drinking. It's already in the baby formula. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just it's just a natural reaction. Someone gets too close to you, just both. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. Right, right between the eyes. Yeah. Well, lad, I won't. Uh, I won't take any more of your time. Um, but I could literally. I try and keep me podcast to forty minutes or no more because people. Right. Um, 
they switch off, but I feel like I could probably speak to you for fucking 10 more hours. So yeah, I yeah. just want to say thanks for taking the time out. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Um, if you need me for anything ever with your how, let me know. And, um, and I've be- got some stuff going on and I'm, I'm starting to talk you straight now. So uh, I'll definitely give you a call. Yeah. I'll come, I'll come down south, yeah. Oh, well, down south, halfway down the northwest. But you know what? Um, I might even come up and just come and get around the pads and that, because I've never been to Scotland, lads. I've been everywhere else but not Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky you. I know. You can take me for an iron brew and a vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next morning. It's good for hangovers. Oh, yeah. Right, lad, listen. Thank you yeah. so much. Have a great weekend and I'll speak to you soon. You too. Lad. Yeah, see ya.